All right, so I wanna share something important about the RTX 2060 today, but before we get into that, guys, Nvidia sent over this RTX 2060. This is the first graphics card that a company has ever sent me for a review. I'm super pumped about this milestone for ZDT. I hope you guys are too. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing off this brand new RTX 2060, but I'm gonna be benchmarking it in a way that no other YouTubers are really doing. And if you're new here and you wanna see more graphics card or benchmarking videos, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell. That way you never miss an episode. But yeah, let's check this thing out. All right, so I'm pretty sure at this point, most of you have already seen the RTX 2060 in action from other YouTubers. So I'll keep my introduction short and sweet. If you're only interested in seeing my different take on benchmarking this thing, then feel free to skip to this time frame in the video. Anyways, the RTX 2060 is Nvidia's latest addition to their RTX line of GPUs. And just like the 1060 from last generation, I kind of have a feeling that this is Nvidia's attempt at nailing the sweet spot for us consumers. The GTX 1060 was and still kind of is one of the best value cards on the market right now and there's a lot of indicators that show that the RTX 2060 is going to go down that same path. First, the amount of power that you're getting for $350 is just unreal if you've seen other benchmarking comparisons, especially against the GTX 1070 Ti. Just a few weeks ago, a lot of people were scooping up the 1070 Ti's because of its high price to performance ratio, but with the supply starting to drop, you can take a scroll online now and see that most of these cards are priced around $500. With the RTX 2060 being right on par with the 1070 in almost every comparison, sorry I can't do it myself, it's safe to say that you're definitely getting a ton of power from the 2060. One other indicator that Nvidia is trying to make this card the sweet spot is think about how many YouTubers like myself receive this card for a review. I mean, we can talk about how this is the first graphics card that was sent to me for a review and how I'm on the path to hit a million subscribers, blah blah blah, but the fact of the matter is that Nvidia Nvidia is sending this GPU to YouTubers with under 40,000 subscribers, so they're definitely trying to sell this card. Moving on past that, for some quick specs of the RTX 2060 for those of you that are interested, this Founders Edition is rocking 6 gigabytes of GDDR6, 1920 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1680 megahertz, a TDP of 160 watts, and a recommended power supply rating of 500 watts. Speaking of power, the RTX 2060 is rocking that new 8-pin power connector on the back side of the GPU, which I I actually really like. It does add about an inch to the length of the card, so that's definitely something to be aware of if you're in a tight case, but overall, it just makes the GPU look so much more cleaner from the side. As far as I.O. goes, this Founders Edition is rocking two display ports, one HDMI, one DVI, and that USB-C port, which will eventually be the single cable needed for VR systems. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about before getting into the actual benchmarks is, of course, ray tracing. Despite all that horsepower that I just talked about on the spec sheet and how it's performing the same as a much more expensive GT X 1070 Ti, we can't forget that this card is indeed rocking support for both ray tracing and DLSS. Both of these technologies are obviously not widely available here in early 2019, but if you're like me, then you realize it's probably a good idea to at least buy into this future technology so you're kind of future-proofing your system. All right, so with all that introductory information out of the way, it's now time to benchmark the RTX 2060 in a way that I personally think it should be benchmarked. If you take a look at every other YouTuber's benchmarkings for the RTX 2060, they're pairing this GPU with i9 9900Ks, 32 gigs of RAM, blah, blah, blah. That's great for determining how much performance you can get out of the 2060. It's actually perfect for that, but it's not a realistic benchmark. Let's see what the RTX 2060 can do in a system that you would actually pair with this GPU. In my opinion, people that are actually interested in the RTX 2060 aren't going to have those super high-end systems, but rather a modest $1,000-ish dollar gaming PC like our testing rig today. This this rig is rocking a Ryzen 5 2600X, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2,933 megahertz, a 500 watt power supply, and the games are installed on a Seagate 7200 RPM hard drive. Keep in mind that we very well might see lower numbers than what you've been seeing all around the internet, but like I said, this is the most realistic benchmark, so that's why I did it this way. The first game up was Fortnite because that's obviously what everyone cares about, and in 1080p in epic settings, I got right on the money at that 144 FPS mark. Keep in mind that that's super low 0.1% low could have been because of the spinning hard drive and that's true for the rest of these benchmarks. Moving on to 1440p, again with epic settings, the RTX 2060 was able to crank out an impressive 96 frames per second. The next game up was PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, definitely a tough one to run still in 2019, and first in 1080p and ultra settings 
I got a very solid FPS average of 124. Switching over to 1440p, I decided to keep the settings at ultra and still maintained an 80 FPS average. If you wanted to get that higher FPS in 1440p, you could definitely crank it down to medium or high if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. Next up was Counter-Strike Global Offensive and in 1080p and high settings, I got a stupid high average of 218. Does anyone actually play this game in high settings though? I don't think so. Also in settings that no one else uses, I cranked CSGO up to 1440p and high and I still averaged 211 frames per second, which tells me we were definitely waiting on the CPU for this one. For our last easier to run game, I used the Rainbow Six Siege built-in benchmarking tool and in 1080p and ultra settings, the RTX 2060 cranked out a massive 225 FPS average, which was just insane. I then fired it up in 1440p and again ultra settings and we still got well above that target 144 FPS mark. Getting into the newer and tougher to run games, I used the Shadow of the Tomb Raider built-in benchmarking tool and in 1080p ultra with DirectX 12 turned on, I averaged a very smooth 99 frames per second. I then cranked it up to 1440p, ultra and DX12 and somehow still managed to get over that 60 FPS mark. This one definitely impressed me. The next game up was Assassin's Creed Odyssey built-in benchmarking tool and in 1080p and ultra high settings, aka max settings, we only got an average of 54 FPS. Keep in mind that there's a huge difference between ultra high and ultra, so I probably should have cranked it down for this one. For the 1440p resolution test, I did end up turning the settings down to high and here I averaged a very smooth 59 FPS average. And finally, the last game I fired up was none other than Battlefield 5 because we all know that it's the only game I can test ray tracing with and in 1080p with ultra settings and DXR turned up to medium, I got a very solid FPS average of 78. On the flip side, for 1440p, I decided it was best to turn off ray tracing and keep it at ultra settings and here I averaged almost the same at 79 FPS. If you want my personal opinion, I think it's better to game at 1440p with ray tracing turned off instead of 1080p with it on for right now. Well, that wraps up my review and benchmarks of the RTX 2060. Definitely a very powerful car for just $350. Now feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit the subscribe button because later this week I'm throwing another build guide at you guys. You don't want to miss that video.